Hey guys, I'm Beres here and I thought I'd show you a little bit where I'm at after a few days. Uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking and uh, I wanted to show you where I'm at right now. Uh, one of the things I've been thinking about is uh, what kind of idea I should implement and I've been toying with like kind of two I ideas that I kind of have a little bit more developed in all my list of ideas. Um, the first one uh, is a I call it the net hack in space because you know guys I'm a big fan of uh, science fiction stuff and I, I really dream of making a game about space exploration and space travel and all that and uh, my dream is to try to avoid the cliche game of uh, trying to do trading between planets or space station and stuff like that. I want it to be more about like exploration. So I, I'm thinking like something about Minecraft or... But you know, a lot of people have tried that and failed. I thought a net hack kind of game where you're a lone spaceship and you're going around and you're trying to find better weapons, laser gun, missile launcher, and you have to probe planets and you have to scan enemy ships and stuff like that uh, could work and I've made a prototype of that a long time ago and uh, it it was promising I kind of found myself having fun just playing my prototype and I thought maybe that's something I could release the advantage of this would be that um, since it would be kind of a, like a net hack there probably won't be any kind of graphics uh, so I can simplify this whole part, I don't need to hire an artist, I don't need to think too much about the, uh, the, the, the design, even the UI is usually just like shortcuts on the keyboard and stuff like that. But, on the other hand, it would be kind of a RPG, and uh, for those of you who don't know, RPG development is actually one of the most difficult things to develop. Um, the, the problem with RPGs is that they usually have a lot of business rules to implement and systems that interact with each other. Besides just balancing the whole progressions curve and stuff like that, there's also a lot of issues about um, bugs that will happen with all the stuff you add. Every time you try to add a new feature, like, oh, I'm gonna add poison, but it's not just about adding poison. What happens when you're poisoned but frozen at the same time? And what happens when you're hitting like a poison monster with a uh, a poison weapon or something, does he get damage from poison and all these kind of little things they add up really quickly and they can make for a very complicated game. So I was a little bit hesitant to go with this idea as a first try into the game development world. The other idea I had is actually an app I made a long time ago to test a little bit uh, Unity's UI. It's a dice throwing app and I know there's bazillion of those on the App Store, so I'm not expecting to make even any money or any downloads, but it's incredibly simple to make, and I think I can make it kind of interesting and kind of unique, and it helped me work on my UI design. So I was leaning toward that idea because it's very fast, really easy. I've made a prototype of that in Unity before, so I kind of already know all the UI, all the design I want to do. I think it's like a sandbox, you know, I'll be able to test different implementation, different uh, microtransaction, uh, publicity, ads, revenue, um, pay, pay app, and all this kind of stuff. I should be able to release multiple versions, maybe one with ads, one without ads, and the one with ads, maybe I can add a microtransaction to remove the ads. And I can test all this on an application that's not like a game that I really, really care about and I want to succeed and I want to advertise and all that. It'll, it'll be like just the first application that I can test things with. And I think it's a good first idea. So that's what, that's what I decided to go with. And uh, I was looking around at how I'm going to make the UI, how I'm going to design that. Uh, I made a prototype of this a couple of years ago. I did it in Unity because at that time I wanted to test Unity's uh, UI framework, but if I want to make something more material feel like for uh, Android and very very IOC feel like for iOS, I think I need some kind of framework made especially for uh, UI design. I went and looked for free cross-platform mobile UI development tools and I found this website that recommended a couple of them. 
and it seems like most of the thing you should use is like some kind of HTML that you compile into Android framework and I really like this the framework 7 thing because it has all the animations for the uh, metal uh, material experience for Android and it's flawlessly switch between metal material and uh, iOS uh, feel look and feel so that would be really nice if I could implement that so I went ahead and I downloaded uh, framework 7 just right here in my project folder and uh, I had no idea how to start um, if you go on the framework 7 uh, website um, it just says download and then there's a get started here but the get started just kind of says like look at the kitchen sink but the kitchen sink is like it needs node.js it needs gulp it needs you know, some like it installed I think a thousand three hundred packages when I did this npm install so I was like holy shit I'm not, I don't want to do that like my project is way simpler than that so I tried to see if I could uh, do the bare minimum. Though if you if you look at it, there they have a sample app here with all the uh, potential stuff you can do, which is really cool. So yeah, I was thinking, uh, look, uh, they have really nice uh, sample here, and you can switch between Android and iOS seamlessly. So it's really nice. Uh, but I couldn't figure out how to make it work and uh, the installation page just talk about like doing some kind of import stuff in ES module, ES next look I'm not a HTML developer so like all of these technology were completely strange for me I mean I've done HTML development I used to do it like 10 years ago but this is all new it's, it's changed so much since HTML2 after I got it working in my browser, um, after installing node.js, which apparently is like a package manager wrapped into a web server, wrapped into like everything you can ever need for web development, uh, and I had to create another app.js for that. But uh, now it's pretty cool, I can just click node app.js in the console, and then it starts a server and then I can see my app here and Chrome has this really cool thing where you can just switch into a uh, mobile device mode and then you can like even select the phone you want and if you relay reload the page you can see it's now an iPhone and if I put it into a Galaxy and I reload hey now I have Android so that's pretty cool and you can see here I am started setting up some layout for what I want to do but it's not quite there yet um, but before I even got there what I thought I'm, I would do was try to build it on Android to make sure that before I invest any amount of time in there that it was viable on Android and I thought Framework 7 was handling that because it, they were talking about like cross-platform being able to build on anything and so on but actually it's not Framework 7 that does that. Turns out it's not Framework 7 that builds it for your device. It's another software that's called Cordova. So I went to their website, I check out a little bit how it works, I downloaded that, and it turns out it installs some kind of common line. And uh, you pop up your uh, common line windows, and if you want to create a new Cordova project, then uh, you just type Cordova, create the name of your app, for example, I don't know, hello world, uh, and then you put the uh, com dot thingy that goes for uh, Android apps, and then I think it's the name of the folder you want to create, and you hit enter, and then Cordova will just create all the basic structure for your new project. As you can see, it created the folder hello world, and in the folder hello world, then you've got a bunch of stuff. Um, Mostly what you're interested in is the www folder, which is where you're going to put all your HTML stuff that will end up being compiled and turned into an APK. Okay guys, I'm going to stop the video here because honestly it's been going on for too long and uh, 
I've had to do so much montage on this thing. Um, probably you've noticed the poor audio quality on this video. The thing is, is that I was using a microphone and after I recorded like 20 minutes of video, I realized that half of it was garbage because the microphone was broken. So <laughs> that sucked. And I tried to like stitch the parts that were making sense together and like some of the more important parts I tried to retape them with a different microphone but the sound quality is different and it's all uh, it's, it's, it was a real mess so I mean it still it still shows you what like the most important parts of the what I've been doing is um, I tr I'll try to put out some other new videos a little bit later but uh, for now I think it's gonna be it I hope you still liked it and if you liked subscribe and uh, see you in my next video guys